this trip was definitely different. Uh, it was primarily focused on leadership. Um, I have been, I mean, I've been on the missions field since 1999. So every team is different. Every assignment is different. But on this team, it was very, it, it was a higher level of anointing. Guyana 2023 was absolutely phenomenal. Our seven-member missions team was led by our own Minister Andre Wright Sr. And our focus was clear. Build up our host pastor, Apostle Ralston Mitchell, and his congregation at Miracle Times Worship Center. Thanks to seeds from our ministry, renovations to the church ceiling were underway. Our team arrived on Monday night. Tuesday morning, we got up and we went over to the Apostles Church because we wanted to see, you know, how he was doing as far as the renovations go. There was a young lady there that was cleaning the church and Reverend Sharon Hooker and myself had the opportunity to pray with this lady. She was battling um, different types of illnesses and one of them that she had mentioned was something that I had experienced before. So I was able to minister to that and when we prayed for the lady, I could tell that she received you know, the words that we were saying about being healed, about being delivered, that lady, I don't know, when we left, she was still out on the floor. So um, that was kind of like the first person that we had prayed for, but there were so many special prayers that happened during that trip. In addition to praying for the members of this church, we hosted a leadership summit where Minister Dwayne Bennett taught on Bishop Daniel Robertson Jr.'s book, Plug In. And, and, and really it's about the power connection, how to connect with your pastors, how to connect with your leaders, how it helps ministry work together all to carry out the mandate um, of the things of God through the power of connection. Uh, Overseer Bennett, they changed his name to Mr. Plug-In. Uh, they are very, in that culture, they're very big on nicknames. Uh, they see what's on your life and they start to call you that. And that's why they called him Mr. Plug-In. We, we did two sessions of Plug-In, uh, four hours each, and it went so smoothly, we didn't even, it didn't seem like we were in there but an hour or two at the most. I um, had each member of our team give a leadership quality of bishop and how it related to their life and how uh, what it meant to them. And that was very, very powerful for the congregation, not only to get to know bishop, but also to see how leadership in action works. These people know the scriptures. They can quote the scriptures, but they didn't know how to apply it. So it's like, if, if you're trying to learn how to drive and you stutter in the manual, you know every answer. You know, you know all the rules of the road. You get a hundred on your tests, but you don't know how to get behind the wheel and drive. So they were taught how to get behind the wheel and drive. And they started to implement it. And so, you know, people started to really grasp the concept of being connected and what that meant for them. I, I get up and, and I, well, I go over and I call the apostle up. Didn't get a chance to pray really. He called, I called him up and I started talking to him and I started prophesying. I said, I said he was resurrecting that nation because all that, all that had been uh, uh, given, or well, I've heard personally was negative. It was death. That's all I heard about Guyana. And so God said he was resurrecting that place. He was going to use that place. And so he was going to build up Guyana and the people just erupted in there. And I laid hands on the apostle and he went in the floor. And uh, the glory of God fell and no one could say anything. God's presence continued to saturate the church as we transitioned from the daytime leadership summit to the nighttime revival. God stuff in you. He told me he's going to resurrect Diana. Uh, Minister Sharon Hooker, she went for first, uh, preached a powerful message, and then here comes behind her is Elder Eric Thompson. Now, he is a ball of fire. Now, this man, he said he crazy. He showed enough crazy. He preached like he was crazy. Because brother, pastor, that represents the anointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what I need you, Come on. I need you to sprinkle it on the city. Yeah. At the close of the service, an apostle, he had the young people come up and we were able to lay hands on all the young people. It had to be over 60 young people. And you can tell that they wanted God. They wanted to be touched. So all the team were able to go right down the road. They were like in there like three rows deep. We were able to pray for those young people. 
So this wasn't a long missions assignment at all. We just had three days of our summit and of our revival. And from the three days, as a result of that, one person received salvation. We had 20, possibly more, that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We had one member, um, one family to join the ministry. We had over 150 special prayers. We had a number of people that went back to their bishop, to their apostle, to their pastors, and they repented of the things that we, they were not doing properly as a result of being taught how to plug in properly. I don't know if I ever get back that way again, but I know one thing, God had his way. And we thank God for all of you all who give your tithes and offerings and make all of this possible. And we thank Bishop and Co-Pastor for their vision hmm, to fulfill the mandate that God has set before us. Amen. Thank you.